This is something I want to talk about a little bit. This is the waters of the United States, WOTUS as, as it's called. Um, this has been a subject the last three district meetings, so we're bringing it up to you. Uh, and uh, what's important here, this was just a, new, a press release that just came out Wednesday. Uh, Senator McCain and Flake both uh, sponsored a Senate bill to actually push back on EPA overreach on the waters of the United States. <clears throat> You, you, it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, EPA ruling, and, and I can't go through the whole ruling, whole ru ruling with you, I, but I will summarize it in my opinion. What this, what this is, is it's a federal overreach and a federal grab into the decision making on your private property or on private property in general. That's the way to describe this. It's a big deal and it's, a, it's an overreach. And you can say, well, how is it that you can determine that they're actually trying to overreach? Um, there's a thing, there, there's a, a definition of a, a, you know, a something that, that a wash that uh, periodically or once in a while water might flow in it. And I think it's called an alluvial stream, is that the right term? Ephemeral. Ephemeral, ephemeral stream, thank you. <clears throat> Us engineers know not how to use big words. But it's an ephemeral stream and, and what that means is it's periodically, once in a while, water runs through it. Does that happen here a lot? No. Yeah, it happens here all the time. If, when you drive through on 95, can you look east and not see a bunch of carved and crevices that Mother Nature has created ephemeral streams all, all yeah, they're everywhere. Are they in people's yards? Yes. Absolutely. Are they, are they, are, are they in, the, in the areas where government buildings are, schools are? Absolutely they're there. I mean, if Bullhead City and Fort Mojave, are we not built? in an alluvial or uh, ephemeral stream? Yeah. This affects every, this could affect everyone. What does it mean? Is that if you do get, if you have um, uh, either material that's washed out or you put material in, or you have uh, something that's on or near this stream and a stream causes damage, you can't fix it until you get the necessary permitting from the federal government. That's what this says. And you can say to yourself, if you, if you want to, oh, they, they don't mean that. You're taking this out of context. Just a minute, James, let me, let me I'll give you a shot. Okay. Just let me try to get through it, though. When we all, we all, and it's not, it's not a utility only issue. It doesn't just affect us. If our poles fall down or washed out, and has that happened before? Yeah. Can that happen before? Other utilities, can they wash out? Yeah. What that means is we don't get to go out and fix it till we got the right permit. Y'all want to stay in the dark while we're waiting for the federal government to do, do permitting? That, that sounds, so we all said, you can't mean this. You really can't mean this. Um, so why don't you just take this ephemeral stream issue and say this doesn't apply to these dry water beds? Because these are not waters of the United States. They're not navigable streams, are they? So we asked that, and specifically in the, in the, in the, the uh, proposed EPA rule, it specifically says they will not exempt these, these streams. Well, if, you're, if you were asked and you specifically are not gonna exempt it, to me that tells me that you have a plan to, to, to be involved in it. So this is a really important issue. Uh, you can talk to us after the, uh, after the meeting if you want to get involved. We, we'd appreciate your, you getting involved. It's not a utility issue. This affects every farmer, rancher, homeowner, school district, government building, all the utilities. This is not a Mojave Electric issue. Uh, this is an everyone issue. We just had uh, Senator McCain's staff out here in the last three weeks to show um, show them to drive around and say, tell us where you can drive that there isn't one of these streams. Show us where there isn't one. Uh, and, and how many of you, are, if you're living in this area, we get one of the big, uh, uh, wa the big rains and your road is washed out? Monsoons. That always happens, doesn't it? So that means they don't get to be fixed until the federal government says it's okay? Is that feeling good to you? Doesn't feel good to me.
So we did get something, and uh, McCain basically, he, he, that's what he's saying, is EPA wants to dictate how Arizona's use their own water. It has a water use impact, but it also has this, uh, this ephemeral stream impact, and so it's a really big deal. Um, it's been proposed that it has a $460 million annually in added regulatory compliance cost, making government that's already big bigger. EPA Clean Power Plan. Uh, this is one that you all helped, or I, I appreciate if you did. We had 11,000 of you all signed cards for it. Um, and what this is, this will affect, it affects Arizona disproportionately than, than most any other state. It affects us, small folks, and we're small, uh, more, than, uh, more than it affects the larger people. Uh, and it affects us, uh, the co-ops here in Arizona, uh, much more uh, dramatically than it affects anyone else. Um, and it, it, what you all did is you rose up, you helped us, you filled out those little cards, we sent them back. They're not just sent to EPA, they're also sent to, uh, the, the, the elected officials got a hold of them. So the elected officials know that. They know that you are all upset about this. Um, you, and, and I usually get asked, or I'm asked, I'm gonna just assume that that, well, what happened? What, did it have an impact? Did our 11,000 voices have an impact? Yes. You've, you not only have delayed EPA, but EPA has, has worked with us directly, worked with, with Mr. Ledger that, was, that, we taught, that we pointed out earlier on maybe some alternatives that, might, that they might uh, uh, think about or maybe even endorse that might uh, hurt us less, I guess is, is the way to say that. So they are, they, we, have, we got their ear as well as we were able to delay them out. Why is it important to delay them out? is to allow the new Congress to be able to try to do something. And that new Congress can try to uh, attempt to try to curb this overreach. And, that, and, and it is working uh, that, that way. Uh, both the House and Senate are, are considering uh, bills that would actually curb this EPA overreach on the clean power plan. And one of the folks that is a main driver in this on the House side is Congressman Gosar. He has been a real ally on this thing. And he does care about what's going on here. So. Regional haze, that was also, that was also kind of almost a, a ridiculous overreach, which was, uh, it's not a health issue. It was whether or not there was, uh, whether it was the, the air was hazy or not. And, uh, and EPA basically came down with a $220 million solution to us. Uh, and, uh, and we said, boy, that's just ridiculous. We, we owe about $200 million, uh, and we have a part of that. So you're gonna double what we owe in, in trying to clean up haze that is imperceptible to the human eye. You can't see it. You have to use machines to determine whether or not the haze is better or worse. It was really, really ridiculous. But what we did is we were able to propose a solution. Again, Mr. Ledger was, was leading that, proposing a solution that achieves better cleanup at a much lower cost. Um, and but we will see some of that impact in, in 2016. Uh, so we know that the WOTUS issue and the clean power plan, we have firsthand knowledge that these aren't just um, uh, issues not to be concerned about in Washington, D.C. There's the reason, we're gonna see an impact. And if we don't do something for WOTUS and clean power plant, you're gonna see an impact again. Coal ash, that was another thing. Coal ash is a residual material that, that comes from, uh, from burning coal. That coal ash we use on a beneficial way. It's recycled, we use it. Uh, and what, they were, what EPA was going to do without, without any science, they were gonna determine it to be a hazardous material. So it would have turned into something that we, we sell uh, and recycle and, and people that, that, that uh, uh, use concrete or wallboard, uh, any of that kind of stuff that use this coal ash, they would be denied access to that inexpensive coal ash. Um, the, the folks that are into uh, uh, the, the concrete industry estimated that, that the, co the cost of concrete and then the cost of construction for anything that was used in coal ash would increase 70% as a result of this. We pushed back and, uh, and EPA has determined at this point, temporarily or, or preliminarily, that it's not a hazardous material. We still are working hard on it because we would like this to be permanent. They've looked at it twice, had no science twice. Uh, again, this is, a, this is an agenda. It's not, it's not based on fact and science. 
And, and you, may, you may ask, you know, what, what are your, what, what's the co-op's position? We endorse all of the above. We, we endorse using all of the resources that we have in a responsible way, clean, environmental, responsible way, but a balanced way. Uh, there are folks that are tr trying to say we should go all one direction, all solar, all nuclear, all whatever. Think that through some, or all natural gas. Think that through some. When you are dependent on a single fuel source, does that not make you vulnerable? Absolutely. So we, it, it, I mean, you put all of your eggs in one basket, you put all your financial investments into one stock. Nobody does that. That's what people are asking us to do. We don't, we don't subscribe to that. Ours is the all of the above theory. And, and balanced and uh, responsible. What's next? Uh, you, you're going to get something in the flyer, in a, in a flyer that, that talks about our, it's called eCar. Um, let's see if I can figure out what it, what it, what it is. So I've been owning it as eCar, environmental, what is it, compliance adjustment rider. And it's been eCar for the last two years to me. What that actually is, is when we do have an environmental requirement that we have to um, deal with, what we, instead of going through uh, a rate case that, that will get approved in spending $750,000 of your, your money to do that, what we will do is take that, that's, that requirement and put it on an e-car and it'll be passed, passed directly to you. And you'll be able to see directly the impact that these environmental regulations are to you. It's not going to be hidden somewhere. It's not going to be put somewhere in a, bu in a bucket. You're going to be able to see them directly. You don't have to do anything at this point. This e-carb is just a mechanism we're trying to get through. So there's really no action. There's no cost issue. When we do eventually get an e-carb, it'll have a zero number on it. And we will update you as, as, we, as we go. So. And again, I, I thank you for helping us uh, in this APA call to action. 11, more than 11,000 uh, for 33,000 members. That's pretty good. That's, that's a great response. Think about it this way. What was, how many folks voted in this last election? 33%? Yep. Anyway, thank you very much.